Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my channel today. It's Ugly Truck Color Day. Uh, brown is probably one of the ugliest colors you could ever have for most cars. Once in a while, there's a car that looks good in brown, but it's pretty rare. I mean, you have a bunch of trucks here. Now, they didn't have brown for the Paystar, so we went with orange and brown, which is a Cle Cleveland Browns colors, obviously. Uh, same with the uh, Freightliner back there. So we have a couple new trucks to introduce today, uh, and we've sold some trucks. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, I finally have sold my Fleet Star. Uh, once again, a great beginner truck, really capable. You probably could do the whole game with the Fleet Star and never bat an eyelash. But um, it does have some deficiencies in the fact that it's pretty low to the ground. Even with the lift kit, it still gets uh, a lot of bottom strikes. And it's small, so when you start dealing with some of these bigger payloads and stuff, or harder roads, muddier situations, that little truck will get stuck. Um, so, uh, also the GMC, I felt like we could replace that with something that was a little bit more off-road capable, which was what the Paystar kind of took over that spot. So the Paystar has a couple issues too, so we're going to talk about each of these trucks, and then uh, we'll move on into our playtime. Um, so... Once again, the Chevy has been a great scout truck. I've used it a ton. Um, I'm very happy with it. Uh, but I, my, the deficiency is in the snow. And, of course, the mud tires are absolutely terrible on pavement. <laughs> but it does okay through the snow. Uh, in order to kind of alleviate that, and I, and I found the, the truck next to it here, this International Scout, and we'll hop over to that. The uh, International Scout has a all-wheel drive diff lock system. For whatever reason, this truck just seems to perform better, especially on snow and mud, than the Chevy does. It's weird. It runs almost like it's lighter weight. It doesn't get bogged down the way that the Chevy does. So the Chevy will come to a complete stop, and this truck will mostly keep running. I found a couple spots where it gets stuck, but uh, and I don't even have the lift kit for this truck yet. Once I get the lift kit for this truck, it's going to get even better. Uh, but right now we don't have the lift kit for it, but I'm really happy with this scout. It's a little bit unrealistic how fast you can travel with it. Um, there is a fire engine bed that you can put on it. I actually choose the pickup bed because the pickup bed has replacement tires. It has spare parts and it has fuel. So you get a lot of tires and spare parts with the fire engine uh, back, but there's no fuel. So I choose that for this, but this is a really strong scout. We'll do some scouting adventures in this. I think today, maybe even we'll have to see, but... Um, it's really uh, a pretty advanced scout compared to the Chevy. It just does better. Better um, center of gravity, too, when you're dealing with that load in the back. Now, the Chevy's a hair narrower, so it does a little bit better on those tight mountain roads. But this thing climbs just as well as the Chevy does. So I don't see any reason why not to move over this truck. It did cost me $40,000 to get it, but it was worth it. The P12 has remained a staple in my garage. Uh, I use it for all kinds of stuff. Definitely still pulling the heavy trailers. This is an excellent, excellent truck. Um, can't see ever selling this. Like I said, it's great for those big haul missions. And it's also good for, like, support. You know, I'm using this as you can see. I got a two. The nice thing about this truck is that, that support tank, instead of being 900 liters, it's got 2,000 liters of fuel in there. Uh, and then you also have the... Um, 350 repair points in the back the only downside with this truck is it doesn't do well on real steep mountain roads it'll get bogged down um, and I've got the second largest motor in it so it's got another motor upgrade to go but it does have some issues climbing um, when you have heavy loads on the back if the truck is empty uh, then it's fine but really what it's designed for is like off-road use but still road type situations where you have mud but you're on a road this is not really meant to be a scout or a mountain climber. Um, so it's not, I'm not, I'm pushing it beyond its bounds sometimes, but I found this has just been a great truck. A little bit of a funny story. Last night, Kyle and I were playing on his map and uh, he had a scout truck out and he was out scouting and he said, hey, I'm going to need help with uh, moving this truck that's stuck in the mud. Can you get a truck to pull it out? And I said to myself, well, I just unlocked this truck and I've really enjoyed how well it does off-road. So I'm going to grab it, and I brought it over, and as I was bringing it over, Kyle was telling this story of a truck that they had in the military called the 916. He couldn't remember who manufactured it, but he said, you know, it's just one of the best trucks out there. Um, they had them. They kept them really well maintained, and they told the next guys that came in after them, like, you better maintain this truck because it's going to save your butt. Like, it pulls better than any other truck in the military. 
uh, never gets stuck. It has a giant winch for pulling stuff out on the back, and it is just a super truck. Uh, and then I pulled up next to him in this, and he goes, now, wait a minute. That's the truck I was talking about. I'm like, what? And sure enough, this is a Freightliner 916. Uh, I think it's MA1, which means it has an Allison transmission versus the, uh, I guess these had a, um, you could either get them with flappy paddles, like a sequential shifter, or you could get them with an Allison automatic transmission. There were two different ones, an A1 and an A2 model. Um, and so uh, his his squad had both. But anyway, I thought it was an interesting story. This truck is phenomenal. I unlocked this because I've reached a certain level. Uh, at, I'm at level 18 now, and this, I think, unlocked at 16 or 17. And this is a phenomenal recovery truck. It is just unstoppable. It can climb and pull anything. I have been super impressed. It's what I've been looking for. I've wanted a truck that can haul trailers around like the semi-flatbed trailers without getting stuck. And this is that truck. Next up, we have the Paystar 5000. This truck is great. As you guys know, I've been using it in past episodes. Um, this has replaced the GMC. My downside is the frame is a little short. So you'll notice back here, this is my two complaints about this truck. One, it tends to tip over fairly easily, and I don't even have the lift kit on it yet. Secondly is, look how far under the, the truck that hitch is. So there's only certain trailers that you can use with it when you have a bed on the back. Uh, and that makes it a little less flexible than our GMC. However, it can go places the GMC couldn't go. We're talking about the MH9500, by the way. Um, same thing as the Fleet Star. This can go places the Fleet Star would get stuck. Though the Fleet Star, toe-to-toe, mm, -to -toe, they're about the same, to be honest with you. This truck just has a little bit more clearance and handles the road a little bit better. You're not quite so bouncy in this truck. Um, but I love the truck. Once again, that's the only issue that I have is I, can only, I can't really pull like a dolly trailer behind it. I have to pull one of the bigger dolly trailers because you have to have a longer tongue uh, on the uh, trailer itself in order to reach to your load. Um, if it's short, it'll just bump in there or it won't even load it. So this truck cannot pull some of those shorter tongue trailers. I was hoping that this truck would be more like the Freightliner. Um, I got this truck first. This was also an unlock for experience uh, when I think I reached level 14 or 15. And I've been messing around with this truck a bit. Um, I really do like it, but it tends, even with uh, everything upgraded, it has all wheel drive, diff lock, you know, the off road tires, all that good stuff. It still gets stuck in the mud. Um, so I get a little frustrated with that. This truck is not superb off, uh, off road. It's not terrible. It's better than like the BM 17 or the, the um, Navistar, but it's still not, you know, like I said, that Freightliner is going to be way better off. Uh, but this has has a added bonus over the Freightliner in that it can tow any size trailer. Like the Freightliner can't tow some of the trailers out there because it's got that service kit on the back, which I can't show you because the barn's in the way. Let's see if we can get a shot. That service kit on the back with the winch on the back of the Freightliner causes problems. So this truck can pull what that won't. But I still can't help but like this truck. So I have kept it in my fleet and I will not sell it. Um, but once again, that was an unlock for experience. So that's the Caterpillar CT680. And uh, we're going to use it as a crane truck if we need it. But uh, that is the fleet for tonight. So let's go ahead and get running. And they're all painted with their horrible brown color. <laughs> I'm going to see what's up for missions. So our first call has come in for the night. Uh, we've been requested to uh, go to town, to the motel, and see what's up. They're having an issue. Uh, they need a curtain side trailer delivered, and there's a specific one that they want. Uh, they had deliveries en route, and apparently they got stuck in the mud. So we're going to go unstick that trailer with our super truck, and we will uh, come back. Now, the one thing I don't like about this truck, uh, two things actually. The handling is super sensitive, as you can see here, just touching the steering wheel, and you're, you're turning. So you have to be careful. When you're traveling at higher speeds, this truck will bounce around a lot. And you'll end up smacking into rocks and going off the road. There are some mods out there that help this truck not steer so so crazily. But you see here, I'm just like, just regular driving is a little bit of a challenge. But you won't get stuck. So that's the trade-off with the crazy handling. Um. <laughs> but it is a bit touchy on the handling, so... Let's go see what's up at the motel. But here you can see I'm not, diff locks are on, I'm not driving with all wheel drive and there's no slippage whatsoever. Now I'm not using the best level 
mud tires, I'm, or the off-road tires, I'm using the second level ones because I like the way they look. They're all nubby, and I like nubs. That sounds weird. <laughs> but I like the nubs on this. I do. I don't know. All right. Sorry. So sue me. All right, guys. So I'll meet you when I get into the town, and we'll find out what this mission's all about. My one other complaint about this truck, and it hasn't happened yet on this trip, but if you're not careful and you travel too fast with it, like where you're just like at full tilt all the time, you're going to find that you're going to do a lot of damage. Um, it does just bouncing on the road will damage the shocks. Same with the engine. You'll damage the engine. So you just got to be careful. Uh, mileage is I'm using the SnowRunner gearbox in this truck, and the mileage hasn't been too bad. Um, you can see there I only used about 10 liters of fuel getting to town, maybe 15. Um, so it's not bad. Um, it's not great, but it's not bad. The only downside is that the fuel tank's a little on the small side. Where other trucks carry 280, this one just carries 200. So let's go ahead and stop in here and ask the hotel manager what they need done and see if we can't be of help. What happened there? Whoa. All right. Let's see. I know this town ain't exactly a tourist trap, but we do what we can. The local motel's in bad shape, and it's down to us to help them out. We've got a shipment of equipment for them. Can you deliver it? Yes. All right. So it's not really a huge mission, and it only pays 1800 bucks. but whatever. We're not in it for the money. We got plenty of money. I'm rich with trucks. So let's go find out where this bad boy is. I think it's over there somewhere. Am I tracking it? What? I didn't track it? <laughs> okay. Uh, motel woes. Track it. There we go. So the curtain side trailer is... Oh, it's not even here. It's over in Smithville Dam. So I think this is the first time that we've... Oh, no, it's not. It's right there. <laughs> Oops. Um, no, Arthur. Okay, so we have our hotel. It's right there. We're going to shoot down the road, come around the corner past the big road, and then it's the next road by the trailer store. Okay. And, of course, the sun's going down. If that happens, we'll wait till morning. If we get there and it's nighttime, I don't want to do with this mission in the dark. I hate towing stuff out in the dark. But this shouldn't take long, like maybe 10 minutes at the most. <laughs> Famous last words. You can see there I was headed right for destiny. Truck's jumping, bouncing around, bouncing off the track. Ooh, magical extra beep. All right, so we're going to head out of town here. and So I'll be back. I'll tell you one thing this game does well is capture that autumn feel, like that sun setting on an autumn day, on a nice warm autumn day. Like you can feel the warm breeze and the, it just, it feels, I feel like I'm in, in autumn in Ohio. And that's my favorite time of year. You get that nice warm air and it's, uh, you know that there's cold air coming soon, but it's like that, that evening feeling, the trees, there's like a warm breeze going through the trees and the leaves are changing color and. It's a great feeling. Then it snows, and all the happiness is gone. Like today, even though it's May, it's snowing outside. What? <laughs> all right, there's the first road. The trailer store, I think, is on the other side here. There's another little road that we need to take that's not that main road. There's the trailer store. There should be a dirt road right here that we might be able to turn on to. Yes. Somewhere over here. There it is. Once again, this truck is just an excellent rescue truck, and I, I absolutely love it. It's small. It's simple. As long as you're staying within the map, it's great. If you got to go out of the map, I would definitely take a, a like some of these other maps that don't have garages. I would definitely take a fuel truck with me or make sure there's a fuel tanker available um, to sit on that map so that you have fuel right away. Uh-oh. Lag spike. 
Game's been doing that occasionally. Hmm. And of course, we're just losing light super quick as the sun just went down below the mountains. So I think we're going to wait till morning for this recovery. I'll get over there and then we'll stop for the night. Sleep in our oh so comfortable day cab. But as you can see here, I haven't done any damage to the truck, and it's because I'm taking my time. I'm not, I'm not rushing through the, the mountains as fast as I can. I'm just slowly plodding my way through. There's no need to rush. This truck can go fast, but if you go fast, you will wreck it up. And the good news is it's somebody's house, so we'll ask them if we can stay for the night and sleep in the shed over there. Can we sleep in the outhouse, please? So we'll hitch up and call it a night. Ta-da! Let me stop the engine, turn the lights off, and visit the neighbor for the evening. And so unlike real life, we're up at 6 o'clock in the morning, and uh, we're ready to take this trailer back to the motel. I'll put the truck in low, low high, or low plus, low up. Kyle said that in this truck they used to call it low up. There was low, low up, and low down. Because <laughs> the minus you'd push down on the stick, and the up you'd push up on the stick. So we're in low, low up. Just slowly ease our way around here. This is a pretty easy haul here. Come on, baby. I'm barely touching the gas pedal. There's no need to rush along here. However, if you want to do things at full, everybody does things. It seems like everybody that I play with, they just run around the map at absolute full throttle everywhere they go. Uh, my wife does it. Kyle does it. Feared Fox does it. Tayloa does it. I try to take my time and kind of play it like a real trucker would play it. You're not going to bash your truck over these rocks. You're going to slowly approach them and figure out a way over them. But some people do. So once again, the 916 is just a great truck. But now we're in high gear. Because the road's definitely widened up. You can see here, even this is too rough for these trucks. Back to low plus. It's this way, right? Yep, that's the garage to Smithville. Smithville, dang. And apparently there is a, a Drummond Isle in Michigan, so that's a real place. That's kind of cool. Real trucks, real places. Based loosely on real places. So when you get this truck, you're going to love it. I'm telling you that right now. Do I like it better than the Paystar? Yes. The downside is, though, once again, it's not as flexible as the Paystar. There's no crane. There's no flatbed. There's no um, ability to haul a service trailer or anything like that. Everything has to be done with either these kind of uh, draw bar trailers or with a flatbed, like a full flatbed trailer. You can't use any of the, uh, the on the truck attachments. So makes it a little bit less mountain friendly, uh, but more street friendly. So we've arrived. Whoa, back in town. Once again, the steering is the only issue with this truck. And like I said, there are, I believe, modded versions out there that supposedly steer better. But this is a little tough to steer.
Folks, no all-wheel drive. Look at this. No problem. But I think this truck classifies just under almost as useful as the Paystar, but in many ways more useful. It's small. It can fit through tight spaces if you need to get somewhere to rescue a truck. Um, decent gas mileage, once again. Um, and doesn't tip over very easily. It's It's got a, a pretty low center of gravity. Even though the truck is tall, it doesn't seem to tip at all. I've never tipped this truck over. So... Flying through town to the motel. And that's it for this mission. So let's go ahead and see what's available next. Here you go. Yeah. Ooh, I've reached 19. Hinged is available for installation. Hinged what? Hinged. Hmm. I wonder. Let's find out. Well, I don't know what that means, but we'll find out someday. All right, so who's next? We have our... Uh, we need to see what our missions are. I'm trying to finish some of these... Uh, let's see. Places beyond the spruces. Some of these are like... Um, mountain missions. Eh, we'll do those later. We will do some scouting missions, but I don't... King of the Hills, a scout mission. Local entertainments, knocking over barrels. Visit the North Peak. Okay, drainage. Pumps. So we'll do those, but I want to work on some of these heavy missions first. So what do we got left? Steel River Township is done. Uh, what do we got? So we got Pipe Dream finished, so not a drill is the next one. All right. Excuse the mess. We're still clearing up after the flood. Water dislodged our rigs. And destroyed one of the drills. We need new parts and construction materials to get things moving in. So we need 2x metal planks. Oil rig to the drilling site. That's off the map. Right? And a construction rig semi-trailer. That's the big one. So this is a pretty multifaceted mission, but we're going to do this now. So to start with, I've done some... Let's see. This is... Uh, all right. Okay, so here's how we're going to handle this. Um... For the first part of the mission, we're going to use this. And we're going to deploy that. Uh, and what we're going to do is I've got this flatbed trailer over here with some bricks and two metal slabs already loaded. I did this for fun the other day just playing around with the crane. So wanted to see how the crane worked. It worked pretty well. Um, but now we're going to have to get rid of one of these. And then we can also use this to grab the drilling platform from... Uh, across uh, over in Smithville Dam. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this on there. Attach trailer. And we're going to go ahead and pull around. I do need to get those bricks off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull over here and we'll use the crane truck to get those removed. And I'll set them here behind the big green monster. Stop the engine. And we're going to hop into our other truck. Whoops, that's not it. We want this. There we go. First, we need to move the Chevy. And I'm just going to recover that to the garage. And then we want our international. We want the Caterpillar CT680. There we go. And we're going to unload this. I'm going to get over on the other side there. We're going to unload that over to where those cones are. Is this a trailer barn? No. Okay. Chuck Wersh. So here's your chance to see the Caterpillar in action. It's a cool truck. Like I said, it's sweet. And that ain't going to work. That might work.
Nope. Try that again. Better. <laughs> Don't want to be bashing the front of my truck. All right, so crane comes over. Whoops, we need to change the truck. Now, I'm praying to God that when I unpack these cargoes, they don't fall through. <sighs> and this is the problem that I've been having with this game. This is a bug, and uh, you can't reload them onto the trailer. It's really bizarre. You can kind of do it. We'll actually use our bricks to do it. Watch this. Okay, so um, isn't that annoying, though? That's something that I've been running into, and that's the bug I was talking about. I was playing around with the crane, and... It pretty much makes this crane truck fairly useless because you can't do anything with it um, because there's no point. Except for load things off the trailers, there's no point because these stupid bricks, and that happens, they fall through. So what are you supposed to do? That's not going to reach. Urgh, hang on. I'm going to see if I can fool this into working, so... That kind of stuff usually doesn't work, but we'll try. Okay. And then we're going to do the crane operation. Lift it up. And we are going to attach from here. We're going to lift this up more. Keep it down. And I need to see what's down there. We're going to attach this from here. Down to here, and we're gonna we're gonna have to pull it out first. So we're gonna winch it out. Dumb, dumb, dumb. This is the kind of stuff that they need to fix. This is this is where Artie gets annoyed. So the trailer is completely, I guess, invisible, see-through, whatever you want to call it. And that is more than annoying. So what I'm thinking is if I put this here, come on. Will it hold? I think it needs to come back a little bit this way. There we go. And A. Drop it there. Okay. So the question is... Change truck. We'll hop in the Freightliner. Okay. Oh, lordy! But it took it. What do we do about the other tray? God. I, and it goes back down. The f seriously buggy. Seriously buggy. Uh, and like I said, that was not broken before. That is something that they broke in this last patch. And I don't know what they were sinking, but they weren't sinking right. Okay. Pull that out. There we go. Pull that back. Okay. Change truck. Well, nope, that's not what that's not the freight liner I wanted. I want the caterpillar. Change truck. Okay. Now do it again. Change truck. And it stayed. So that's good. So we can do unpack pack. There we go. So we got our load. So that's good. We're done with that. And then we're going to... So isn't that silly you have to do that? But it's it's one of those things where... In some ways it's good we have a crane truck, but in other ways it's annoying because you can't really use it to load stuff onto the trailers the right way. 
anyway, I'll quit complaining about it, but I am a little bit annoyed that that's, that's how things went down. I <laughs> can't get it down there. Um, I think that's going to be our connector right there. Let's again winch it out. Oh, now it's solid. Great. No. Okay, drop it. <laughs> drop it. Bad dog. Good dog. Perfect. And it's going to rain on our parade. Not bad. So everything's where we needed it to be. Still a little bit annoying, but we got it there. So restore the crane. Boop. And drive off happy. I think that's all we'll need this truck for tonight. But we got to use the Caterpillar, so that was cool. Let's go ahead and start our freight liner up and get hauling. So the moral of the story is you're in trouble if you don't have something underneath that you can load onto if you're using a flatbed trailer. And this is true of all the flatbed trailers and of the cargo trailers, of any of the drag behind ramp trailers, it happens on all of them. I think the twin star bed is the only thing it doesn't happen on, and it's that's super bad and super annoying. Sorry guys, that just that annoys me. So we are going to our um we never followed the mission, did we? Not a drill. Activate and we're tracking it. So we need to drop these at the drilling site. This is gonna be quite a bit of a trip. Um, and it's not a straight path at all, but we're going to go here over the mountain and let's see, I'm trying to think of which of these roads is, I know this road has really bad camber right there. I've been on there enough times. So I think our best bet, uh, we could go. I think we'll be fine going this route. Famous last words. And we'll we'll know where to go once we get there. But So let's go for it. Um, off we go to Into the Wild Blue Yonder. Let's see how this does. But we're going to just once again show the prowess of this truck. We have a fairly full trailer bed. We're missing one small load on the back, but this truck is pretty much... This trailer's the capacity of most trailers that you're going to be pulling with this. So could use some all wheel drive here. We'll put it in low high in the rain, up a hill in the mud with a fully loaded semi trailer. And we have zero problems. <laughs> Once again, that is this truck. It's just that strong. And it's good looking too. What a good looking truck. Though a little small. It's funny. To me, the, the front end looks a little tiny compared to the amount of power that you're getting out of it. But I wonder what years these were made. I'm assuming these were, this was like a 19, late 80s, early 90s truck. I could be wrong about that, but it has a 90s look to it for sure. Maybe even 2000s. Though I know Kyle was in the military in the 90s, so... If this is what he was using, this is then this is going to definitely be in that era. So once again, for those of you that love the twin steer, I still think this is better. It's much more flexible than the twin steer, and you can pull just as much of a load with it, if not more. <laughs> 
to the same places. And it, it doesn't even get, the twin steer gets stuck sometimes because it doesn't have uh, all-wheel drive. It's just diff locked. So I don't know. I think the twin steer is a great truck, but I think this truck's just a hair better. And like I said, with the articulated frame, like with me, to be able to do a tractor trailer, it's it'll fit in some places a little easier than the twin steer. When I get my twin steer, we will definitely try it out and use it for some missions. But um, I'm just not a huge twin steer fanatic. Always stop for gas when you have the opportunity. And then what we're going to do is we're going to continue on across um, the river with this trailer and head on to Smithfield Dam, and we're going to pick up the drill. And we'll bring that back and bring it to them. Wow, is it evening already? The weather's been so bad all day. Nah. I don't want to take you with me, Tree. I really don't. <laughs> All right, so here's the road down. I didn't prep for this very well because I was busy looking at my gorgeous truck. We need to uh, come back up here. I'm going to back the other way a little bit so we have some... It's not doing what I want it to do. Turn. All right. Um, it's a little too, little too late. Ugh. Nope. This way. Yep. There we go. Nice and slow. But you can see here. Even here, we have some bad camber, and we're not even starting to tip. So. Now, from what I've heard, there are obviously much stronger trucks in the Soviet Union, from what Feared said. But I still really like this truck. I think it's it's going to be a good American exploration truck. And then when we get the snow map in Alaska, or in uh, I mean in uh, Russia, we'll do some Russian trucking with the Russian trucks. So there is a new map coming out soon for Russia. They said within the first few weeks they're going to be releasing a Russian map. And uh, once again, thanks to Feared for that information. I actually kind of like this paint scheme. I might keep it. Maybe we'll keep brown truck paint schemes for a while. <coughs> My allergies are starting to catch up with me as the as spring comes around and the trees start to let go. You can hear it in my voice. I don't feel sick, but my I'm definitely congested. And there's our, our destination up ahead. Hoping that there's a fuel tank down here, but I think we already recovered the fuel tank for a mission. Yeah, we did. Dang it. Oh, well. This is the first time we've been to this site. Now, there is a utility trailer parked down here. We're going to move it because there's an issue where it's parked. Sometimes it'll suck into the to the drill and then it actually will bug the entire game out. I don't know if they fixed that or not, but I'm not taking the chance. I'm going to move it. Kyle basically said he I guess one time they had a, a HET, a HET, which is which was stuck heavy equipment transport that got stuck in the mud and they used one of these trucks to pull it out using that winch. He said it took about an hour at really slow RPMs, maybe two hours, but it has like a super slow, super strong setting, and that's what they put it on, and it very slowly but surely pulled the head out of that mud pit. And um, he said these, he said this truck, he said they put, um, they'll put two, um, two of the troop transports. What do you call those things? The uh, I forget, not grenadier, not grenadier. I'm trying to remember what they're called. But like the armored personnel carriers, he's like, they'll put two of those on a trailer and they use this to pull it through the mud. He's like, they just, they never stop pulling. Till they break. But if you take care of them, they don't break. So there we go. We are almost out. 
and happily so. And no problems whatsoever. We did not get stuck or bogged down once in the rain, in the mud. This truck just proves itself to be a beast. And here's our delivery zone. Now we're starting to get... Now this is boggy here, but look. No worries. We'll just push through. Here comes the rain again. Sweet. <laughs> now what do we need? We need one oil rig, so we'll get that next. Parking brake off. And we're going to grab some fuel from the El Servizo. Um, no? What? It's empty? No! Okay, well, we're going to just leave it then, I guess. Dang it. Of all the stinky things. But one thing we are going to do before we get done. Hang on. I guess we can unlock the Smithville garage. It's right next door, and then we'll just uh, we'll get service there. We're just going to pull that. We're going to leave it near here, but we're going to pull it out. Where? How do I get off this island? Oh, no. Uh, well, the best way to go out is through town. I guess we could go this way. It's just it's a long drive, but we'll do it. Coming back, though, we're going to go the long way through the sawmill because you'll see why. You'll see why, pretty. <laughs> That thing's all bouncy and stuff. Are you guys happy? Are you happy to be here with me today? This is going to be a longer episode because we're going to... We still have like two more trips to do. So you're going to be looking at about an hour, hour and a half. But that's good for you, I suppose. And I'm happy with that. All right, that's... Well, we'll go a little further with this until we get to the water. All right, we're going to drop that. Because I don't know I don't know if that trailer is needed in another mission, but... Um, and actually, you know what? This is getting really picky, but... Got to run it back. Well, the trailer wouldn't be too far away if it didn't roll away from me when I tried to attach to it. All right, there we go. Not going the right way. I don't want this on the road, like in the way, so I'm just going to pull it over here. Because when we come through, there's a big part that we will be coming through within a little bit that we need room for. So let's go ahead and detach that.
And off we go. <laughs> Once again, in the wrong gear. All right. So we're going to continue on here. We'll get out of this swamp. And we're going to drive over to Smithville Dam and we'll spend the night there. And come back in the morning with a drilling part. I will not be using a crane to load the drill because it will fall through the trailer and we'll never get it on. So there's no point in using the, the cranes. That's why I'm kind of pissed off that the trailers don't work. Because to be honest with you, it kind of kills part of the fun. Part of the fun is having the crane and being able to use it. So look at the scenery. Oh, low gear. Oh, didn't get out of gear fast enough. Got to watch that stump. I get caught on that stump all the time. You really do need to swing out into the water even if you don't want to. Did we make? Yep, we cleared it. And wow, well, we actually re a bog that might hurt us. No problems, but we are running through a lot of fuel. I'm trying to. I don't want to be stuck in here too long. The frockies are chirping. Got exactly half a tank of gas. We should be fine. I would think that this will be all right. Might be like 3 o'clock in the morning by the time we get out of here, but we'll be okay. I'm just trying to get out of the muck. I'm driving along the side here a little bit. <laughs> 